Okay, most of the time with these particle motion problems, you will be given a graph most of your time. Um, if you're not given a graph, then you need to graph it on your calculator and look at the graph that way. All right, so let's start by talking about if we were looking at our position function. If we're looking at a graph of the position function, and there's an interval of time for which the position, S of t, is increasing, then really the only conclusion that you can make there is that the particle is moving to the right or up. It is moving in a positive direction. If your position function is increasing, then your particle is moving to the right or it's moving up in a positive direction. So similarly, if your position function is um, decreasing, then your particle is moving to the left or down. If your position is equal to zero, then that means the particle is at the origin. Not necessarily where it started, but at the actual origin. Okay, so that's if we're looking at the position function. Those are about the only uh, conclusions so to speak, that we can make looking at our position function. Now, most of the time, the graph that you're going to be given is the velocity graph. Okay, so th these are the very important um, conclusions that we need to make here. Okay, so if your velocity is positive, okay, positive velocity means that you are moving in a positive direction. So this is the same conclusion as when S of t is increasing. The particle is moving right or up. Now, that should also make sense based on what we know about the relationship between position and velocity. Velocity is the derivative of position. So if your position function is increasing, that means it has a positive slope, so it's derivative. In this case, velocity is going to be positive. Okay, so if your velocity is negative, then the particle is moving left or down. Okay, when your velocity is equal to zero, then the particle is not moving and I've got two conclusions to write here, so you may want to give yourself a little extra space. The particle is not moving, and if, it, <clears throat> um, if there's a change between positive and negative, then the particle changes direction. So now, every time your velocity equals zero, your particle does not necessarily change direction. Most of the time it does, but sometimes uh, your velocity function may just touch the x-axis and go back in the same direction that it previously was. That just means that your particle has stopped for that instant, and then it continues on in the same direction. Um, but if you actually change from positive to negative or negative to positive, then your particle changes direction. Okay, now let's look at two more cases with the velocity. If your velocity is increasing, uh, then your acceleration is positive. Okay, that goes back to the PVA relationship. Uh, acceleration being the derivative of velocity so if velocity is increasing, it has positive slope, then the acceleration is positive. 
and then if your velocity is decreasing, then your acceleration is negative. Okay, just a couple more here. For the next two, actually we're just flip-flopping the relationship that we were just looking at. Um, now we're going to shift gears if we're looking at the acceleration graph. If your acceleration is positive, then the conclusion that you can glean is that the velocity is increasing. And if your acceleration is negative, then the conclusion that you can draw is that your velocity is decreasing. Now, this is one that, ten, that tends to trip people up. When your acceleration is zero, you can still be moving when the acceleration is zero. Okay, you can still be moving when acceleration is zero. That just means that velocity is constant. Okay, velocity is constant. It's not that you have no velocity, it's that velocity is constant. You're not changing. <laughs> okay, and then the last two are the conclusions that we were talking about the other day. When velocity and acceleration have the same signs, then uh, your speed is increasing or you're speeding up. Now, typically we draw this conclusion when we're looking at the velocity graph. So that would be V of T is positive and increasing or V of T is negative and decreasing. When they have opposite signs, then you are slowing down or speed is decreasing. Okay, so that would happen when velocity is positive and decreasing or when your velocity is negative and increasing. And I'm going to put under the increasing here and decreasing that A of T, the acceleration is positive and negative. So you can connect those. And I just thought of something else that I knew we put out of our way. Oh, um, <clears throat> if they ask you about the speed, speed is the absolute value of your velocity. Okay, speed is velocity without direction. They are the same numerical value, but speed does not have the magnitude or the sign that velocity has. Velocity without direction. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, speed is velocity without direction, so speed is equal to the absolute value of your velocity. Okay, so if, if your velocity is positive, then your speed matches it exactly, but when your velocity is negative, uh, it gets flipped. <clears throat> 